and welcome to Elizabeth's Craft Room live on Facebook um, this afternoon on Wednesday the 11th of November. So lovely to have you with me if you are joining me live. I'm just waiting to check that I have actually gone live. Oh I have but I've got my sound turned up. Technical issue. Let's do that. You can hear how delayed it is when that happens. Right, okay, I'm on and I'm not alone. <laughs> That's always good to see some little numbers jumping up to know that I've got somebody joining me. And Kathy is with us from Toronto. Hello, lovely Kathy. Um, it is lovely to have you with me. So it's always good when I'm not on my own. <laughs> How's the weather in Toronto? I need to know. Um, Antriana is joining us. Um, she lives about um, a few hundred yards from me. <laughs> Antriana lives just down the road in Roundhams in Southampton. So I know what the weather is like where you are, Antriana. I hope you had fun in your Zoom this morning. Um, I did a Zoom with my lovely ladies this morning, but Antriana couldn't join us because she was doing another Zoom. And one of the ladies was doing three Zooms today. So it is the new it is the new way of communicating, especially here in the UK, where we are back into full lockdown number two. So apologies for uh, not going live last week. There was um, it was the day before and it was a bit crazy. We had some things that had to be sorted. And um, also uh, Mike wanted to go and see his mum and dad while he still could. Um, Sally Loden is joining us. Hello, Sally. Sally's a little bit further away, but not not as close as Antriana. Um, but probably, Sally, you've got the same weather as me. Kathy says it's warm and sunny, about sixty five degrees, seventeen. Yeah, I I I know I know summer weather in old money, and winter weather in new money. So crazy girl here but I, I understand 65 more than 17 but once we get to you know one and two I get it more in centigrade who knows why um oh that sounds lovely warm and sunny and 65 in Toronto shall we all go there <laughs> it's gloomy here it is gloomy and it's not cold I've just gone and put some goodies out in my stamping shed for um, one of my ladies to um, to collect. And it's not chilly out there at the moment. It's just kind of gloomy. So not very, not very nice. Right. So, <laughs> Kathy's still a Fahrenheit girl. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm inches and I'm miles, which I'm not supposed to be in this country, either of those two things. And I'm kind of half and half Fahrenheit and centigrade. It's, yeah, it's funny. See, Antriana, she's a young one, so she's going to be centimetres. Um, but Sally, I'm not saying anything, Sally, but you're an inches girl, aren't you? <laughs> I bet Sally's an inches girl. <laughs> right, OK, enough of all this um, jabbering. Um, I have got a question for you this afternoon, which I would love you to answer. And that is, and I'd like to see it. And if you're watching, if you are watching on... Um, on catch up because I know like 90% of people watch on catch up rather than on the live so if you're watching on catch up I'd love to know where you are and what the weather's like and I would also like to know what you do with all the cards you make because as crafters and definitely as a Stampin' Up! demonstrator I make lots of cards um, on my first um, live real world live a few weeks ago I showed boxes and boxes of stuff that I have made since March and it was over um, 300 cards. So what do you do with all your cards? And I will tell you in a moment what my what I am doing with mine other than the ones that I'm obviously sending to friends and family. So Antriana is trying to convert to inches and Sally is both inches and centimetres. See, I, you, you don't want to judge. You don't want to judge. <laughs> yeah, it's, to be honest, if you follow any um, US demos, then you're going to need to do inches anyway. Most of my customers, I would say, are inches. 
I was change over generation, so I was born 66 and I'm change over generation, so master of none here. But I mostly do inches now, it's kind of my main thing. I convert to centimetres occasionally, but mostly inches. Right, so what do I do? What am I doing with my 300 cards? Well, my answer is, apart from those that I'm sending to friends and family, because I haven't got 300 friends and family, is I am popping a card in every bag of goodies that my lovely ladies are collecting. Now, although we're in lockdown, we can do click and collect. So one of my ladies has clicked this afternoon, well, actually sent me a text, um, and is collecting <laughs> this afternoon. So that's what we are doing. We're doing click and collect here. Uh, that is still, that's still legal in lockdown number two. So we try and abide by the rules. Um, but I always put a card. Now, I've always done thank you cards and I've always made thank you cards. But I am so overloaded with all the cards that I've made this year. They're getting the big cards, not just a little three by three. They're getting full on cards. They're getting shakers. They're getting all sorts. So it's a complete lucky dip with me as to what you get in your in your bag as a little thank you. What does Cathy say? She says she makes mine as card fronts and keep them in a disc system booklet. Woo! So you keep them as like reminders of what you've done. Wow. Gosh, that I think I would have. You see, I make too many. <laughs> Anyone will tell you, and I always say I make too many samples, but I get excited and then I make too many. So I would have a lot if I did that. But it's interesting that you make card fronts because, yeah, I tend to make I do tend to make full cards. You see, and Kathy doesn't want to give them away. And I have I have to say, I have definitely heard some of my class ladies saying that, that the cards are too pretty. They don't want to part with them. That is the wonder of scrapbooking, of course, because you don't need to give away your scrapbooks. Um, but <laughs> yeah, it's good. Right. OK, I am going to move you across because we are going to have a look at some brand new projects that I've made with the Curvy Celebrations goodies. And these are new new. So this is not something I have showed. I've shown some Curvy Celebrations elsewhere, but these are um, new new projects, two of them. I'm going to demonstrate and lots of others um, to show you. So let's go ahead. I'm going to hang on to your hats. Shut your eyes if you get dizzy. I'm moving you across. And hopefully we will get you set up. There we go. In more or less the right place to be able to see what I am showing. So all about curvy celebrations. We have three separate things. Oh, sorry, four separate things. Four separate things for curvy celebrations. We have two stamp sets. We have a set of dies that go with both. And we have some designer series paper, which I'm just reaching for here. We have some designer series paper, which is really pretty as well. Now, the paper and the curvy Christmas stamps are just available here. Um, whereas the quite curvy stamps and the dies are going to be available, what do I mean here? Um, <laughs> these are going to be available in our spring um, summer catalogue. It's not called that anymore, it's just called the mini, but it's the mini that is starting in the spring. Um, so these are going to be available then, but you can get them now, we've got them early. So you can get everything now, um, but the Christmas uh, stamps and the papers are not going to be available after the end of December or their wild stocks last. So let's quickly run through the things and then I'm going to show you some projects. So the papers that we've got, there are lots of designs and they are all double sided. Some of them are more festive. So like these little, I love these, this is Sahara sand um, and this one, these are a bit more festive. But the alternate sides could really be used any time of year. And I think both of those, the stars and the little leaves. So they are not just for Christmas, although they're only available at Christmas. Then we've got those same designs um, in Cherry Cobbler and also in the, uh, this is Shaded Spruce. So those are 
the colours. Kathy is saying she loves the birds. Now the birds are these little diddly. They are so sweet. They work as robins for Christmas time, but they are so sweet. They could be blue tits. They could be, um, they could be all the sparrows I have in my garden. Um, but yes, they are really sweet little birds. My favourite, I think, out of the curvy Christmas is this star, um, star one. And then we've got dies that cut curved edges we've got dies that leave a little embossed piece with the cut and then we've got pieces that cut out um, the actual images and some extra leaves and they cut out the birdies as well so they're absolutely gorgeous um, and all of those things are available now from your Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Or if you're in Europe and you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, they're available from me. And you can reach me at Elizabeth's Craft Room. Okay, let's get started with a bit of um, stamping and a bit of colouring and a bit of making. So I'm going to start off with doing a very simple card um, using this image here. In fact, I'm going to use this image twice and show you how different the um, the cards can come out using that um, image. So let's start off with a piece of Whisper White. I'm going to use Granny Apple Green and I am going to ink up my image. And this is on block I, which is one of our bigger um, blocks. You could also use it on the Stamparatus, of course. And there's our there's our leaf image. Now the easiest way to colour these is with blends, and I've put my blends very safe to do this. <laughs> I'm not seeing them right now. Okay, here they are. <laughs> So I am actually going to use the granny apple uh, to colour them and I would go all over with the lighter colour first. Now there, there are no rights and wrongs with blends with some colouring um, materials and you can see I'm doing this really quick with it, as we're live. Don't want to keep you here too long. Um, there are with some colouring media you know, you have to do this and you have to do this. You can't do the light before the dark or whatever it is. But with this, there really are no rules. You do you. Um, and honestly, blends are just so lovely to use. The only rule is that they are brush. This is a brush tip, the bigger tip. Don't press too hard. And I do say that this is probably one thing I would say um, not for small people um, <laughs> because small people will use them like that and once you've smushed the end ask me how I know there is nothing very much you can do I have tried to fix them so you do need to go with a light touch and all I'm doing here is just going back along and coloring with the darker granny apple green over the centers and you can see that no special skills are required for doing this and then you get the green image now you could play around with that and give it a really good um, give it a really good blend with the lighter color to make it all blend together but I actually quite like um, the contrast that you get um, on that so let's bring in the Stamping up, stamping, cut and emboss, way too much of a mouthful. Um, the handyman, as we call it, at Elizabeth's Craft Room. And let's pop that on. And it's quite well behaved. It gives a little, a little bit of a white edge, but not a big one when you die cut this piece. Let's pop that out. So I was probably a little bit near the top, so I've a little bit more white at the top than the bottom, but that doesn't matter. We can pretend that's exactly how I meant it to be, <laughs> because every project is different. Now, I'm going to do a non-festive, 
project. In fact, both of, both of them are non-festive. It could be because I've been making Christmas cards since July and I'm kind of a bit over Christmas at this point. <laughs> so <laughs> I am going to do the wishing you the happiest of birthdays. Now, the nice thing about these stamps is they are photopolymer. So the bendiness of them can be adjusted. So if you want to do, um, let's pick out this big one to show you. This is um, May Your Days Be Merry and Bright, but you want it to be more curved, then all you do is you get your block, you put, you start it off of, of the, the May there, and then you kind of bend it around until you're happy with it. You can put both ends on and then you can lift that end up. And if we want it more of a curve. So you can get whatever curve you want. And when it comes to the curving of the die, sneak peek, when it comes to this piece here, you can see you can make it be whichever part of that curve you want it to be. That's the same stamp. So that's one of the advantages of photopolymer stamps, the clear ones, is because you can reposition them as well as see through them, it does make it nice and easy for greetings. But we've just done a little curvy greeting on there of wishing you the happiest of birthdays. Then I'm going to mount that up on a piece of the granny apple green. And then what I've done is I have cut two layers in granny apple green of the using the same die that I used to cut out this one. And what I'm going to do is to give an extra border to this piece. So I'm actually going to use Tombow because then it will give me some wiggle room as I put it down. So start off with the bottom one. Okay. So this one goes on first. Oh, Elizabeth Summers is joining us. Hi, Elizabeth. Nice to have you with us. Sorry if I've missed anyone else joining. I've been paying attention. OK. Right. And a little bit more on there. And then I'm going to wiggle that one on. And you can see that now gives us a bit more of an oomph in terms of, that is the technical term, in, in, in terms of making those, um, making those leaves really pop. So we'll pop some dimensionals on the back there. So often we just think of the, um, the dies that cut out a shape only for cutting out that shape. But remember that they can be used... Um, like this, cut a couple, spread them out a little bit on the back and give yourself a fancy border, like so. And we could put a bit of ribbon across or something um, similar to that or some uh, twine, um, but I won't do that for today. I will just pop that onto a regular card base. layer that up. It's another one to go in my Liz's lovely ladies bags. <laughs> now just to show you this one here I've done first of all I've done it the other way up so the leaves could go either way so I've done the leaves the other way up but here I just haven't coloured them. I've just put it, put it with the white and it gives a sort of a simpler um, look. Let's have a look at Another example, this one is done again in neutrals and again you could just have the splash of colour with a piece coloured in. So which do you like? So that one obviously I'm now contrasting this, with this, this here is in soft suede, so here the background is in soft suede. So I'm now contrasting the colour rather than having the same um, the same colour. Oh, it's lovely Kerry. Hi, lovely Kerry. How are you? Um, so, yeah, some different ways of, 
uh, different ways of doing this, but your blends are so lovely to use because for somebody like me, who I don't consider myself to be much of a colorist, um, you can still get a really nice professional sort of effect with that. Okay, so that is project number one that I'm making today. I hope you like that one. I've just realized I haven't got my big screen around here to see what you're saying and I might have more chance of actually seeing any comments if I've got it on my iPad. All the technical stuff is not my forte. Okay, so let's have a look at the second project that I have for you. Now, this is going to create a floating piece and I'm doing these, this in sort of autumnal um, colours. So here's one I did earlier. <laughs> So you don't have to watch me for so long. Um, I'm just going to put, actually I'm going to put a little bit because I didn't remember to put very much of the, um, this one is cinnamon. This is the light cinnamon I think I've got here. I didn't put much of the cinnamon in so I'm just going to put a little bit more in. There's my autumn colours. Um, so I've got pumpkin pie, light and dark. Um, I've got um, Mango Melody Light and Dark, a little bit of the dark, um, that is the Granny Apple, and a little bit of um, the uh, Pumpkin. So, um, Debbie, oh hi Debbie, Debbie Hackett is joining us, she likes the contrast, and Antriana says love that. I don't know if that was the last one or this one, Antriana, but thank you. Okay, so we've got this little um, piece here to cut out. So let's bring in the die cutter. Where's my die? And cut this one out first. Look, I've got a new... I've got the last... Uh, I've moved my plates round. So when my top... My, when my bottom plate becomes um, really scratched up, I put the top plate down to the bottom and get a new top plate. And I have a new top plate today. It's so lovely to be able to see through. <laughs> right, I've gone a little bit low again. So nil point for me for that, but never mind. Um, but you get the idea. Okay. And then what we're going to do is I've got my card base here. This card base is in um, the... Um, it's going to come to me, Bumblebee. This is in the bumblebee. Now, the di these these dies. What you have to watch for is where the edge is. So that is going to give me a smooth edge this side, and a decorative edge this side. And when I was cutting a lot of these for a class, I actually put a little bit of washi tape um, because a couple of times I got it the wrong way round and had to start again. So I actually marked it with a little bit of washi tape so I knew which way round I wanted it. So I'm going to, I want to have the decorative edge on this card. So I'm going to pop that on like so. Now, if you are doing this on the big shot rather than the lovely new um, handyman, um, watch those edges. This has a little bit more give for things that go edge to edge. Um, but if you are doing this on the big shot, just watch those edges. You don't want to catch them as you go through. It does fit, but it's, a, it's just a tight fit. So I've taken that piece off. Let's move this out of the way. And what we want to do is take the die brush. Now you may have the old die brush, and I do. But the reason I ended up, even though I've got the old one, getting this one is that it does come it goes on to the end of your um take your pick tool and so when you get to the stage and these are little fiddly bits and when you get to this stage where you've almost got them all you've got your pokey tool right there on the end so i did get the die brush attachment so i've got it all together right i've made a right mess there let's get those bits out of the way. Okay, so we've now got the pretty the pretty edge on there. I'll just pause briefly to show you a couple of things if you haven't already seen. 
with the other edges that this cuts. So it cuts a smooth edge, as I said. So that's gonna be like so. So it cuts the smooth edge, but it also cuts this really fancy edge. And it cuts, now if I hold that up to the light, as gloomy as anything here, but hopefully you can see that that is cut through. I've got white on the back to show you. And then it's also embossed. So you get like this effect of a little, um, a little ivy effect. What I would say is that if you cut the fancy edges on the designer paper, you kind of lose them. It's quite hard to see, even up against the yellow, you can just about see it. But I think they look really, the fancy edges look really nice on the cardstock because they just show up a little bit more. Right, now let's get on with doing this, um, this floating card. So what you need when you do a floating card is you need some um, window sheet acetate our stampin up one is window sheet and then i'm going to put some adhesive across here and i'm going to use the um the stamp and seal i want to have just a little and i'm reaching for a bit of this because just at this point can you see that's going to go right up and so i don't want to have too much right there and then the rest of this i can have a a line of seal on there so I knew I want didn't want too much in that place pop that down lining it up with the bottom and close the card down and then you've got a perfectly lined up clear piece on the front lines up with the back of the card now we can pop this piece on and this is going to float so off we go with a bit of floating. So again, I'm going to use this. Now, although you can see a little bit of the adhesive through the back, I'm not worrying too much about that. You can obviously see also a little bit where the colour goes through, but it looks quite pretty. So I'm not worrying too much about that. I want to add some birds and some stamping as well. So I'm using one of the curvies and I'm going to go for Hooray for You, make this a birthday card. And I'm going to have my piece coming down like so. I stamp that in early espresso. And then I want birdies. So here are some I die cut earlier. I stamped and die cut. And they look quite nice. This is stamped in uh, on crumb cake. But they look better when you give them just a little bit of colour. So I am going to make these into sparrows. Um, we are doing robins for one of our December projects in class. So I'm only adding a little, a little bit of colour, and that was with um, the ivory. So really quite subtle. And then I want some mini dimensionals for these. And what I don't want is I don't want to see dimensionals through. They are a little bit, a little bit ugly. So I'm going to pop my birds on top of the leaves there. Make sure the dimensionals are hidden. And then we'll put one of them just standing up here at the top, maybe on top of them, maybe just there. And finish off with a little bit of ribbon. Kathy's saying four colours. And then we've got some gingham ribbon. This is out of the big book and this is the um this is in the bumblebee colour. So coordinating ribbon. Let's put a little bit of the snail down there again to just to hold that in place. It's not snail anymore, is it? It's seal. <laughs> and then tie a little bow. Ooh. 
That was really rough cut, that piece there. Let's give that another go. Right, there we go. So that now floats. If I put the card from above, you can probably see that more. So when you're looking at it, that is a, a completely floating piece. Now, the only thing to remember is when you write this card, you, you're going to need to write your sentiments and any greetings and so on at the top because you don't really want to see necessarily, unless you've got beautiful handwriting, then you may. You don't necessarily want to see um, see it at the bottom. So I'd probably put a little white piece underneath um, at the top. But then that just makes it look as though the leaves are floating. Um, it's another uh, example that I did. There you go. And you can see. You can position your little birds wherever you like. You can alter your hooray for you around. But they work quite they work quite nicely. But I'm not done yet. I am done demoing, but I'm not done showing. So I have more for you. Now you may have seen some of these if you've been stalking my blog. Um, you may have seen some of these. So we've got a couple of kind of festive ones. And this is where I've done a little robin with those birds. They are so sweet. I've got that one upside down. Um, the stars, the, um, are they called the stitched stars? I'm just trying to remember. Can't see them at the moment, but yeah, the star dies that are still in the catalogue. Um, those ones go quite, um, go quite nicely with these as well, because you've got the little, um, the little star elements along at the bottom. So these were the first ones I made. Um, Oh, looks like we've got more people joining. Hi there, thanks for coming along. Then we've got, so I mixed these up with the, um, now what are these called? These are called freezing fun uh, stamps. So this is a really fun way to, um, to combine them. I love the I love the um, the look of all these little critters, um, but they were really good to do. So I've just got it. I've got a little bit of bling on there, and he's bouncing around. My little my little bunny, um, and I these trees are so are really so sweet as well. Down here I've got my stars, and the little seal is just bouncing, just bouncing above. Kathy likes the red and yellow. So yeah, that was the um, bumblebee again. I usually I wouldn't put yellow with Christmas, but for some reason it just it called to me, um, probably because of the stars down at the bottom, I think. So that's those. And do I have more? I th oh, I've got this one here. So this one um, shows a little bit more of that ivy look. So you can see that in Boston. This time I've put some of the pepper zazz behind it. So you can see the green ivy coming through. And here I've kind of used a paler version. I think this was done with the uh, soft sea foam. And then this one I've stamped direct onto um, Pear Pizzazz. And it just gives a little bit, I've just sort of intertwined them a little bit and have got the birds sitting in and amongst um, the leaves there. Much more springtime than the, um, than the autumn one that we've done today. And one final thing um, that is not using um, really the, the stamps at all, but just one of the stamps, but, but using perhaps something that you've already got in your craft one, craft room, is this one here. So just so simple, just using the die to get this beautiful curve, um, the medium daisy. I actually drew in the stems. And tip is draw the stems in first before you stick the flowers on. Ask me how I know. Um, so, so draw your stems in, um, the little bow in the matching colour, which that is the uh, Just Jade. And then a piece of Just Jade behind. The little hello is from, is from the, um, the spring, quite curvy uh, one. So uh, that is my final project. So that was quite a few for today, two demoed and lots to show. So I hope you have liked today's um, projects. If you are enjoying this sort of content, as they call it, <laughs> online, um, then do feel free to um, like my Facebook page or my YouTube. I would love to have you um, come, come and join me. Um, I will be back next week 
on Wednesday at the same time with another project. So hope to see you then. Thank you for visiting Elizabeth's Craft Room today. Thanks everybody. Bye.